think that's probably the best choice. I was just, I was stuck in this idea of them pushing the bottom tower really early with Enigma. And I think that might have been the idea for Secret to begin with, but they, they've they adapted. He's running 8-0. I don't know why what? Eternal Envy is all chatting. <laughs> all this. All right. Well, to find out why he's all <laughs> chatting, we've got casters. So uh, before we hand it off, guys, predictions? Do you, do you like the draft sins very quickly? Secret either stomps in 25 minutes or loses game. All right. Shannon, I think great. C9 takes this. I'm going back on my prediction. All right. Well, we're going to have a 5v5 clash potentially. So for that, we hand it off to Gods of Winter. Game two now underway. Here we go. Game two, Cloud9 versus Team Secret. And a bit of a battle brewing here in the Radiant Jungle. As Fato going to be poking his nose forward on that Shadow Fiend. Looking to swagger his way forward, and Secret going to be looking to back off. Not the best level 1 fighting lineup with the Enigma, but possibly looking to at least find out where these wards are going down. So Cloud9 uh, have the Abaddon, have the Aphonic Shield or Mist Core to help them out, and as well as the Blade Fury being one of the best level 1 fighting spells. Maybe looking to force out some spells here. Grave Chill comes out on Envy. And he actually takes uh, a bit of harass here. No Tail Shields himself. Not sure if that was the intended outcome there, but... Bone 7 now. Somewhat isolated will also take a bit of harass here. So, early pokes and prods. The ventures into the Radiant Jungle. Settle down, Winter. What's going on here in game two? Oh dear, begins. they wanted to push them away so they could not tell where they placed the wards, but it actually did not work out. The sentry is gonna. Oh, he's actually not going to take away the, the other sentry on the left here. Only the observer on the right. Yep. Gets just the one here. We'll introduce our two teams quickly before things get truly underway. Secret on the Radiant side, down 1-0. We're going to have Kuroki playing the Visage. It's going to be Puppy on the Dazzle. It's going to be Arteezy shifting from the mid lane to the safe lane on the Lycan. S4 on the mid lane, Queen of Pain. Similar story, getting harassed out by the Ventures. And finally, in the offlane going to be Zai on the Enigma. For the Dire side, Cloud9 going to be running Eternal Envy on the Juggernaut in the safe lane. Misery on the Vengeful Spirit. Fata once again on his Shadow Fiend and in the offlane, a dual lane with Bone 7 on the Axe and Big Daddy No Tail playing the Abaddon. Well, I, do, I don't expect the bench to be able to do too much though. He's just not going to be, be able to force the um, opponent mid laner or not to be able to see us like a Bane. Bench just, I, I don't think he can do the same damage like he did the last game. And bottom lane, no Bone 7 going to get an Optic Shield cast on him and he's able to play very aggressive with that support yeah. behind him. Just oh, look at him. Oh Puppy's my god. He's gonna be careful. Another missed call coming out here and Bone 7 just continuing to man up on this trial line. Mid lane though, there's some aggression from S4 under the tower, just using that shadow strike, trying to give Fata a rough time. He says, This is an actual even 1v1 matchup. There's no bane for you this game. Let's have a good old fashioned 1v1. Quat versus SF, a kind of a classic Dota matchup. Yeah, this would be they was this would be a very good matchup to watch then to know who can actually outplay each other. And Pretty even matchup, would you say, hero-wise? At least depends early levels. On, depends on who gets the better rune as well. Yeah. Whoever gets the better rune will will just be able to win the lane straight on. Well, the Enigma shifted to the off lane. The hero people kind of expected to see Puppy on, but this definitely helped out Secret's lanes. Because looking at what's clean, I picked. We're all both sitting here like, uh, Secret, their lanes are screwed. There's nothing to pick for Zai. But putting the Enigma in the off lane. Being able to pick a secondary support is going to salvage their lanes. Yeah, right now. if they didn't do this, I, I think their lanes are just going to be very weak, very greedy. So, doing having this move done by Puppy definitely very helpful towards their lanes and putting putting less pressure on the safe lane of uh, RTZ. Yep. Well, he's got the two supports. It's still a rough lane at bottom with the Axe Abaddon. Yeah, he's still getting a lot of farm on the Axe at the moment with eight last hits. And you look at RTZ, only six last hits on the Lycan. He's going to get another few at the moment. So, so far, still doing f about the same CS as uh -oh, the Axe. Oh, middle lane, the Courier! It's going to get caught out! One more right click! No bottle for you! Oh, what a disaster in the mid lane! Misery! He was the player in game one with the Bane. Getting all that enfeeble harass, and he does, well... Similar damage in the mid lane once more. This time around, it's the bottle snipe. We've not seen a courier snipe like all tournament long, it feels like. And finally, one comes out in the, one of the most important matches of the tournament for Team Secret. Mr. Parker, you must be proud of that. <laughs> I love me a good bottle snipe. I love me a good bottle snipe. And that was, well, a pretty straightforward one. Something that Secret maybe should have seen coming. Bone 7 bottom in trouble. Gonna get slowed by the Grave Trio here. And Poison uh, touch as well. Oh, Abaddon's no. on here. He's gone back to base. He didn't actually... I think he was out of HP, out of mana, and left Axe on his own. So first blood goes Secret's way. No Tail gonna heal himself back yeah, up in the he, fountain. He but. went back to base to re re yeah. regenerate. And 
X was just playing so far ahead. Like he got too comfortable in the lane and paid the price there. Well, with that, Secret at least make up possibly some of the damage done oh by this, losing their courier. This mid lane for S4 has not worked out. Like two games in a row, he got destroyed by Misery. <laughs> not Fata, but Misery. And Fata, well, he'll reap the benefits of this on that Shadow Fiend. Hero hasn't played in a while, but a hero that he was kind of known for, at least back on some of his previous teams, uh, being one of his better heroes. But right now, he's got the edge over the Queen of Pain because of this. Bottom lane, four minute rune gonna come out. Big Daddy No-Tail takes the haste rune in. Oh no, Kuroki's in trouble here. Oh, he even skills up the passive. Big Daddy No-Tail had kept a point, and he's gonna slow Kuro with this. Kuro, gonna get chased down. Here comes Bone 7 as well. The Grave Chill comes out. Kuro on the run, but there's an axe with the Berserkers called. Kuro's just straight up dead. Of all the runes, Secret cannot catch a break this game with. Papi's gonna get chased down as well. Are they gonna continue to chase him down here? No, it seems like he's just oh. harassment. It's just too far. Yeah, Big Daddy No Tell decides against it. <laughs> I guess a theoretical grave or heal could have uh, caused him problems. Arteezy says, I want out. He TPs himself all the way wow, home. This is a lot of damage being done. Uh, yet again, once more by C9 in the laning phase towards Secret Slains. Oh dear. The Enigma at top's getting a lot of CS yeah. here, but MB still getting good farm himself. They are more or less trading farm because they can't really zone him out. He's going to be able to pull the wave back all the time like a lich, so... I mean, at least they're getting good farm on MB. That's the good thing about the trade-off there. Yeah. I mean, for C9, all three lanes going well. For Secret, it feels like it feels one like lane going well. Just the off lane is going well. Going to, it feels like it's going to be the similar story. Secret gonna have all the lanes except the, si the off lane not going well. And Bone Seven creep skipping once more. They're gonna they're gonna have three heroes here try to zone him back, but Big Daddy there. Oh, he misses the call onto Puppy and that. They are fine though. They can't. Secret just can't kill them. Yeah. They don't. Ha uh, grave chill is the extent of their initiation and their. And if they can't kill with the grave chill, it's not. They're not doing is, anything. This is like just C9 exploiting the weakness of the lane. They don't have a stun. Not much. Not much killing potential without a disable. Just a slow from the. Vi the, the Visage and a lot of right click from the Lycan Hall. And because of that, S4 in the mid lane is on his own. He's not getting any ganks. As you said, these, these supports don't have stuns. They can't gank a Shadow Fiend. The only hero who maybe can is the Enigma in the off lane. Jackie Mao got, got Puppy figured out there. Removing his jungling heroes that would help the lanes and taking advantage all of the laning, laning prowners that Secret have right now. Well, Secret... It, se it seems to be they were getting, I mean, the entire group stage and even the series against each game, they would just get away with these greedy lanes and, as you said, it's being punished here. So we'll see what Secret look to do to adapt. They're stuck with this draft here in game number two. They've had a few unlucky breaks. S4 has hit level six on his Queen of Pain, so possibly look to make I, a rotation. I think the next point would, that Secret wants to look for to be come back into this game is like the TP scroll on the Enigma right now. Yep. If he can TP to bottom lane, get a black hole on both of the Ab Abaddon and the Axe, get a kill or two, that would be a, a good start for them. Or even maybe rotate towards Mano to get a black hole, but that would probably be unlikely because Fata is just going to double race and push the wave farm jungle all the time. That would be his pattern in the middle lane. So I would, I, I would not expect anything to happen there unless they actually dive to gank the corp, which is also unlikely. So probably the most likely action would be on the bottom lane for the Enigma to TP and help out the lanes. Oh. Just the two secret supports in that lane is Arteezy has rotated into the jungle to saying he's going to get better farm over there. Mm -hmm. And one more interesting thing I want to point out as well, like Envy chose not to take any points in the Blade Fury just, just because it's not going to be useful in the lane. The, the wave is always back near the tower, and Igma's going to be farming, so that he just went for... I, I mean, I didn't expect him to go for 4 points in crit, but unusual. Mid lane, S4 gets double race, a Misery stun! Misery is the mid lane master this series. And he's the annoying hero, like he's the Mirana of this series. We were talking during the break that... We were wondering why Secret hasn't put Puppy on the Mirana that we see him a lot. Bottom lane, here we go. Bone 7 gonna dive in. Big Daddy No Tail gonna be there. Backing him up with the first Emphotic Shield. Gonna chase down Kuroki, but not gonna be able to get him there. No kill, but damage has been done. Bone 7 has a Vanguard, by the way. Eight minutes in the game. There's no killing this guy unless you're bringing in Queen of Pain or Enigma. Yeah, and here comes our top oh, lane, the first black hole. Black hole. Arteezy gonna pop the shape shift. They haven't dealt with the healing ward here. Envy still keeping himself somewhat healthy with this, but they will have enough damage to bring him down. 
the help coming into play there and an important kill for Team Secret there. And Big Daddy now to picks up the bottom rune, the haste rune, and he's going to scurry himself towards middle lane, but I don't think he can get the... Oh, he has, he's actually going to go for the kill. The bottle charges are going to come out here. S4 has his first bottle cancelled, but has some more charges, and Big Daddy no tail just going to be happy with zoning out S4 from the mid lane. It's top lane. Secret do get a T1 Zai, tower. Zai is just keeping them in the game and taking that yeah. top tower with RTZ, the rotation for them. Yeah. I mean, Zai's played well. He did have it the easier... At this point, he had the easiest lane for any of the Secret heroes, to yeah, some extent. Definitely. Um, maybe S4 would have done okay mid if he didn't have his bottle snipe, but... Top lane, Envy's come back in. No black oh, hole this time around, just a... He has just killed Blade Fury, so... Okay. Just the one value point so he can get out with the magic community if he needs to. And here comes Bone 7 and Abaddon coming to help their brother Eternal Envy out. Gonna mm. force them to go back, force RTZ and Zai to just move back out of the lane. So C9 and 5 fight. up here, RTZ is no shapeshift. Wow. This is problematic with Faze, but this is a kill. Yeah, he's they've dead. got the Omni Slash, but they're gonna hold on to it, I imagine. No, they'll just use it to secure Man. the kill and... SF goes back mid to continue his laning dominance over the S4 Queen of Pain. Second game in a row, we're just seeing S4 get crushed mid. SF with almost Man, double at, the net worth. At this point, I think going for the Orchids would be like a really tall task for him. Maybe changing the item selection that he wants to go for. Going for Axe after easier to get, yeah. the easier build up and gives you raw HP to survive a call from the Axe. And I'm not sure though, at this point it feels like the Orchid is not a very good option for S4. Here comes Misery! Oh, oh no, he almost got another stun onto S4 and that would have been a kill again. Very, very close, but Misery really... Such being such a pain towards S4 in the middle lane, can't catch a break. Oh, Secret are trying to sneak a Roshan here. They make it past Big Daddy No Tail. Oh, no. He was in position to scout out the smoke. Oh, he obviously doesn't know. God. I mean, at this point, it's about time Secret catch a break. This is this is a, going to be this is a huge bold move by Secret, but yeah. it seems like it's going to pay off. If No Tail had scattered that off, at some yeah. point you're just like, how lucky can Cloud9 get this game? <laughs> They've just had so much go their way. Finally, Secret gets something. It's going to be an Aegis in their hands. We saw this last game, though. Uh, Arteezy snuck a Roshan, but ultimately was not something which really he's, helped them out too much. showing Jackie Mao. You, you want to be good at sneaking Roshan, yeah. I can do it as well. <laughs> well, it's one of the, uh, I guess, comeback mechanics we're seeing some of these teams resort to, especially when they're really far behind. It's kind of Secret here are in the early game. The Fata Shadow thing just dominating the net worth right now, and... He's going to have a mech up. He's completed it back at base, needs to bring it out on the courier, and... Team Cloud9 looking good here in Game 2. This game could see Secret knocked out of the tournament. They went undefeated in the group stage. They were 17-0 and 0 at one point, LG's and they could be finishing... Remember what happened to LGD as well when they went undefeated? The yep. same story. <laughs> you lose one series and then suddenly things fall apart. This, though, would not be a top three finish for Secret. This loss here would put them tied fifth place with Team Rave. It's still a respectable result for a team at their first LAN event, but based on the hype around this team, based on how they welded in the group stage, this is a team most people are expecting to get top two, top three. Yeah, Secret gonna lose the tier one tower in middle lane. Enigma's gonna, Zai's gonna move in towards the middle lane to help defend it. Here comes the ship pop from Atizi. Well, we'll see them look to loop around here. Enigma the black hole, they'll look to use the shapeshift with this black hole, but... They back off. They thought Cloud9 were going to get greedy. I feel like Arteezy's there like, I know this team. They're going to go for this tower. They're going to try and just get a bit too much out of this. But they didn't go for the tower. No opening for a black hole. The shapeshift is wasted. And, well, not much Secret can do. They can fall back, farm the Ancients. and still a fairly even game after Secret took the Roshan yeah. and the tier 1 at top. Man, the Enigma, and the Enigma just kept them in the game. So far, Big Daddy Note, they're gonna have his level 6 and NV rotating bottom with his teleport score. They wanna take the tier 1 bottom, it's very low. And looking at Seeker's position, can they actually get a trade off from here? Mm. Middle name Tau seems like a. a Omni Slash comes through, takes out a familiar, and Kuro gonna go down as well to the rotation from Shadow uh, there, He's gonna lose another familiar. This is dead as well, and oh. he can't reset. That, that is expensive. That is indeed very expensive. They're going to defend mid as well. Oh wow, the glyph comes out. Everyone's going to scatter here. Bone 7 is going to be leading the charge here. Black Hole is available for Zai. Is he going to go for it? One hero could be coordinate, but Bone 7 brought down by the Sonic Wave. Goes through, catches out three. Great placement from S4. Get just getting those other heroes in the back lines mm. down low, kind of deterring he, them from chasing. He didn't pop his mech though. Would have at least forced S4 to stick around and do more damage to kill Bone 7. But it was... I think he just... 
didn't expect the wave to blow him out so quickly. Wanted to bait the corp to actually stick around with longer, but in the end, yeah. causing Bone Seven to die without the map being popped, I think it was. <sighs> Well, giving giving away something at this stage is not really good for C9. It's still a fairly even game, even though they had a very good laning phase. Ah, uh, it does feel that way. Fats are going to run into the Queen of Pain here. Is Puppy actually the one in trouble? He's going to grave TP out. Nothing to cancel this, as the TP from the Vengeful Spirit wasn't in time for a swap. Envy now with a completed Mask of Madness can power jungle. He can easily keep up and farm with some of the other heroes in this game. And Bone Seven needs to get that Blink Dagger up. I feel like that's the next big item for Cloud9, because so far, going for the Vanguard has kind of Go taken away that initiation tool of his. Envy, not going to use the Omni Slash, as here comes Zai, he's got a Black Hole available, he wants his kill. Mech going to come out as well, the Malifus is there, Black Hole available. Maybe worth it for this kill, there's no TP scroll, and Envy going to go down to the right clicks. This is a big kill for Secret to be picking up. That is something Envy's going to be regretting here. He played so well in Game 1, he's played perfectly in Game 2 so far, but... First mistake we see come out of Jackie Mao. Yeah, trying so hard to get the extra the kill. Probably feeling the hit attack. that they weren't in as good of a position as the first game. He wanted to get something out of it and just overextended, paid for the price. Oh. And looking at the axe now, he almost has his blink. So this would be the crucial timing for C9 to actually try to find some kills with the axe here after going for the, the much more economical build by getting a Vanguard. And the death at middle lane when the Shadowfin didn't mech him, also hurt them a lot. So yeah. he's going to get his blink finally at 15 minutes. It's not a very good timing, considering he had such a good start, even with the Vanguard. But let's see what he can do from here. Yeah, for now it feels like Secret Arc managed to catch up as far as their economy is concerned. And Zai is very, very far. He's got a Vitality Booster on top of the mech and Tread. Sing on 1200 HP, and that's with Intel Tread. So he's just looking to help his team by taking up. Is this just a casual Vitality Booster? Do you think he's going ATOS? Um, I think it might be casual or Atos. He could still look to go for the Blink Dagger this game to make sure that he gets good black holes. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised even if he goes for the Atos. Like the Blink is not 100% better than the Atos here. Uh, Both could work depending on how he wants to play the situation out. Middle tier one tower. Bones haven't going to go for a smoke, oh but no, it's his uh, teammate in trouble. He TP'd in. The second TPs can come to the tier two tower. That'll be a reasonably fast one. Misery. Dead already, and the Axe Blink Dagger not here just yet. Bata gonna TP himself in. Back hold. Oh, possibly wants Zai gonna turn around, go for the TP out. Omni Slash is gonna cancel it though. Zai gonna go down, and that mech by Tower Booster not saving him there. The tower does get destroyed by an Enigma Eidolon. Well, that was uh, that was unfortunate that they actually still got the last hit of the yeah. tower. I think we had like a single idol on there, which just somehow snuck in. And yeah, I actually thought for a moment they would actually turn and fight. Corp had ultimate, uh, level two ultimate there, so they could have actually black, yeah, turn and black hole and try to take things like take a Dark kill or two, light. but. In the end, they felt it was too risky, they didn't want to do it. Tried to TP the Enigma out, but was unfortunate. At least they salvaged the situation, they still got the tower. Just giving up the one kill and getting the tower. Also some Double good pressure and farm. Arteezy was top lane yeah. while that was going on, pressuring the tier yeah. 2. He's up to 6.5k net worth. So it's going to be the Atos for Zai here. Okay. He picked up a stuff of Izuji, so Atos, looking at the potential of the item, definitely works well with the Familiars. You can Atos from a far range, the families can go in to do damage, and not to mention the wolves as well. Could be an item that actually gives the team the utility initiation they need, because they don't have much disables in terms of getting an easy initiation apart from the stun, so Atos could be the item that provides them the initiation they need from far range. Well, game two, dead even as far as the farm goes. So Secret have stabilized things here. We'll see how things pan out. It is Cloud9 on the dire side. Sure, Secret managed to sink the last Roche. I imagine that's not something C9 will allow to happen again, unless Secret get complete map control and dominance in the next five to ten minutes. But that at last Aegis did expire. Didn't get used for too much, but... No, well, I, I'd say it got used to just kind of bring this game back to even in some ways. Yeah, and the Wolves scouted out Bone 7 going to top, trying to set up a kill, but RTC knows that, gonna back off. And so far, the Blink still hasn't gotten anything done for his team on Bone 7. Needs to find some some pickups here. Oh. Bottom lane, Kuroki gonna get surrounded by the Juggernaut. Yeah, and the Shadow King. Grave chill and look to run at this point. Familiar stun uh, one and two. He may get out of this one, but here comes your big dang no tell I Abaddon. Think but they can get the kill. No, yeah, look like it. They're gonna, gonna try to kill. Yeah, he's gonna resummon. They're gonna at least force him to resummon his familiars, which is a long cooldown, 180 seconds at the very least. It is, but I feel like all in all, Kuro played that well. 
Do you don't want to give away that easy gold worth the re- I mean, you're gonna have to resummon them anyways, so. Yeah. But looking at the game at this point for Secret, they're gonna be able to finish uh, Orchid on the S4 Corp fairly soon in the next few minutes. He actually caught up very well after the start he had. Did not expect him to get this at such a good timing. It's still a very good kind of timing considering the start that he had. Yeah, he was getting <laughs> dominated by the Shadow Fiend. Flatter did kind of rotate a bit into the jungle and was playing fairly defensive at certain points of the game, but... Right now, C9 looking to make a move on mid lane. Well, Enigma gonna get swapped back in. No tower available, but here come the rest of Secret. Looking for backup Grave, not in range, and Puppy. Thinking he could maybe get in there for that. Bone 7 has a blink in three seconds time, but... I mean, it's pointless to try and Grave, yeah, though. It's, it's the Axe. It's the axe. That's there's, no, right. there's no point for him trying to go in with the Grave. Oh, S4 almost caught by the blink call of Bone 7. Mm. He's practically got enough money for the Orchid now, so we'll see that coming out, and... I'm kind of theory crafted the Orchid not being as potent in this game, but it's a good timing at least, but... It doesn't I, feel like there's a big hero to I, use I, it I'm on. I'm not sure though, because there's uh, a Baden, it doesn't feel like... The Orchid would be actually helping the Quop do a lot in the yeah. game. I mean, you can use it on a Baden at the very least to stop him from saving a, t a teammate or, or so. And here comes the Invis Shadowfin. Tries to get a Requiem off. Oh my god, he's gonna get it. Wow, S4 gets the Bleak out just in time. 40 Great. HP. Healed up by the Dazzle and... Wow, that was just as close as very, he could get. Yeah, if he walked on top of... Fata, that would have been an insta-kill, I believe. I don't think he got the full damage from that Requiem. Yeah, I don't think so, but it was still a very good effort for Fata, trying to yeah. get that solo pick off with the Invis rune. They got a ward on the Ancient area by Big Daddy. Placed, that, placed the ward there, make, making sure that Secret can't really use the Ancients as effectively until they make, they deward it. But here comes the Orchid on S4, so let's see what he's gonna be able Can to... Can they get into the Roshan pit to contest it? They have smoked up, they're making their move down there. Lycan is at top lane right now, and Roshan just drops too damn fast. Here we go. They still wanna fight! Fata, he's the one with the Aegis, don't wanna overcommit to this one. Midnight Pulse is there, and it looks like C9. Going to be at least uh, forced back to some extent yeah. here. Not wanting to go up onto the high ground when they are somewhat lacking in vision. You know, the only thing I can actually figure out of at the moment the Orchid could do, the biggest thing he could do is like get a solo pick off on Envy since he yeah. still doesn't have the Manta. He's not far away from that. He has the Yasha and 1.8k go, but there's going to be a window of timing where this Envy is a player that he likes to be as efficient as possible. So the Quad might be able to actually, if you find him, you catch him alone with the Orchid. So it could actually get him one or two good pickoffs and here comes Bone 7 a call on Puppy it's gonna go down here yeah. nice so observer ward by the ancient Puppy gonna grave but that ain't gonna help him Axe gets the chop and Arteezy in kind of no man's land here but at the same time this positioning's working well for him because he's not been scattered out he's farming in the enemy jungle this is some kind of hyper aggressive farming that's just not getting punished right now he just needs to give space to his team to farm yeah. though he just wants to do that man. they're searching for him over by the secret shop cloud nine scuddy scuddy is completed okay that's a lot of farm on your fatter shadow fiend uh, as for trying to look for the career they're not going to be successful yeah. well this is if you're a secret fan right now you're going to be very worried about the current situation for secret they need to be able to get a fight, a good fight with a black hole to be able to turn things around at this point of the game. The Orchid so far not doing anything yet for S4, but we shall see whether in the fights he's able to actually silence the battle, preventing him from saving a teammate. Oh, you talked about the solo kill potential, Envy at mid lane, oh, gonna get Sonic no. Wave, the mech coming in from Fata oh. though, barely survives. That was so, so risky, but he managed to survive Radiant just by the skin of his teeth there. Oh. That mech kept him alive and like, 50 HP and then in came the Miss Coil. Yeah, that's, that's one of the moments you just give your teammate a high five. Thank you, bro. All right, Bone 7 in the top lane. He's gone in kind of alone here, but here comes Puppy with backup and Bone 7's overextended. He was wow. doing the Bone 7 things. Got a deny on the tower. Why did he actually jump in? He was alone. Yeah. There was no backup. And I'm not sure if he actually could have even gotten a kill there. Well, we'll Maybe he just wanted to Dyer's try and get the tower. And the bottom, he's going in with a, a wrap around here, hiding at the secret shop. He's been pinged out though. He's been spotted. Up. Secret code's gonna look to TP and evacuate. Abandoned ship, says Puppy, and they'll get out scot free. No casualties in the bottom lane as both Puppy and Kuro TP home. So the Manta star will be completed by Eternal Enemy. Okay. So that alone would remove any killing potential the Quap has on him at this point, unless it's on cooldown. So. I'm not sure what the Orchid's gonna achieve, so right now, 
since he can't really kill the jug anymore, the Venge will probably be walking with his team most of the time unless you catch him out alone. So the Orchid probably wouldn't do so much here, but let's see what will S4 go for his next item. Probably wants to go for a defensive item next to BKB. But at the same time against X, I'm not so sure if it's actually worth it. But we shall see what he decides to. And looking at Zai, he has 2k go right now. Whether if he goes for the dagger mm. at this point, it's quite uncertain as well. I want to see some like Ags Refresher type play here. He might even want to consider getting a Lincoln, so to be honest. Against the swap? Yeah. And you can even give the Lincoln, like maybe to at the clutch timing to prevent the Culling Blade from Axe on your teammate. If you Lincoln the Culling Blade, does the Culling Blade go on cooldown? I do not know. I think okay. so, because it counts as it didn't kill a target, so it should go on cooldown. Alright. But here now. we go. And we... Mass of Madness. He's got his... He's got his famous bottled up oh, DE bought, rune he as well. The blink. He just bought the blink just to get out. <laughs> <laughs> Is he... Oh, you, I guess he's used it now, so he, he can't sell it, but... Hey, it's, a, it's an item he probably wants nonetheless. Yeah, it's it's still an item he wants, yeah. more, le more or less. And here comes the gank. Can they actually get this kill with Envy? I'm not oh. so sure. Antiz is going to immediately shapeshift and... Needs to stay, maybe stay with his crew, but needs some mana burn. Envy, Envy can't go oh, for the Envy Omni Slash. Too much mana burn. Now, TZ just needs to run. Envy wow. has got the Aegis. And here comes the Quap. Can he actually catch oh, up? Oh, no, he hasn't got the Aegis. He's only got 100 HP. He's actually dying to the wolves here. Envy may go down. He's trying to bottle up in between right clicks. The Necrobook could finish him off. <gasps> Queen of Pain, oh, Blink in, Sonic no. Wave. Oh, oh he hits him. S4 gets the kill. Goes down in the meantime, but that feels like it's worth it at this stage of the game. Oh my god, did that he actually get the streak? Barely killed him. It was a gold, a pretty even gold exchange, I guess. And it was a kill going he to the Shadow Feet. ran back into the Sonic Wave. If he actually went towards the bottom side, I think it wouldn't have hit him. Man. Yeah. I thought Envy had the Aegis. Aegis was on the Shadow Fiend, and that was where I'm like, okay, Envy's just manning up. He's got no mana for an Omni Slash, but... It was, it was a Jackie Mao versus Arthur Barbev show down there. Yeah. Jackie Mao don't bring no ages to <laughs> no fights. Even even man won't fight. Yeah. Uh, he, he's not. He's going to fight his friend on even footing. At least today, didn't show much mercy in game one. But here we are, game two. Right now, it's uh, Artizi keeping up on farm with Envy, but Fata's Shadow Fiend once more, topping the net worth chart and having an amazing game. Next item on the books for Shadowfin. Let's see. The, he bought something. Something's on the courier, and it's a talisman Butterfly. of evasion. Butterfly. Oh, they're gonna pot, they're gonna catch Fata out here. Well, blink, stun. Necrobox up in a couple of seconds. Fata's in this room. Not gonna save him here, and he's, without a BKB, Fata's just dead. straight up dead. Yeah. Oh my God, that's a huge pick off. Oh, that is a high priority kill. They need to get out. They need to get out. Enigma can blink and Atos someone. Oh, Atos is coming soon. Their Bone Seven getting slowed. He's gonna get oh, silenced no. up as well. Shielded off though. That's the Aphonic shield power, but Bone. Seven still in trouble. Zion looking run. for a blink black hole. He's chasing. He's got the black hole. Is he going to use it? Nope. Doesn't do so oh immediately. Oh no, misery. Second Atos comes out. It's a third kill. Secret just kind of snowballing from one kill to the second to the third. That was just a very, very good play. Outmaneuvering their opponents, and after they, when they realize the Shadow Fiend is going to be down, C9 tried to scramble out of there, but just could, they just got caught out by the familiars and got caught out by the Rod of Atos. There, paying off. And see the power of the. The Rod of Atos and just having the timing. The Necrobook came up exactly when they mm -hmm. needed it to deal with that Invis rune that Fata picked up. And that was a big turning point. That sequence of events. That gives Secret... I don't know about... I feel like that gives them a bit of an edge here. They get a bit of more map control and they're trying to just pressure some of these towers in the meantime. Middle lane. Secret needs to be very careful now. Venge is already out. Shadowfin out as well. They need to make sure they don't give away whatever they actually worked for a few minutes ago. Yeah. And looking at the Lycan, has he actually gotten something else? He's working on an assault caress. Has got the the chainmail picked up. Isn't this the chainmail he got earlier? That he didn't decide to make it a medallion ah. because they couldn't get the Roche. Hmm? We'll see what his oh, next item of choice is going to be. Mm. It feels like AC not yeah, bad against yeah, Shadow a Fiend, against AC, Omni Slash. AC would definitely be a very Just, good choice here. Uh, it feels like the armor will help him a lot. You've B also got the B counter healing. KB next after the armor item, I guess. Uh, okay. Light. Against the Shadow Fiend. But I'm I'm not entirely sure even if the BKB would be the most optimal choice since a lot of physical damage in the end of the day coming out from C9. Yeah. Going like an AC into an Abyssal Blade. Even a Heart of Tarrasque yeah, if you want to. Heart wouldn't HP. even be a bad choice here, in my opinion. 
but we'll see. Double damage rune picked up by yeah. Big Daddy Note here. here. Bone 7, any item progression. He's gonna get a Shiva's Guard recipe here. So gonna work on that as his next item progression. Uh, looking at the supports of C9, do they actually have Ghost Scepters to actually protect themselves? Misery doesn't have a Ghost Scepter, only a Medallion so far. Their support's much poorer than Secret. You look at Kuro, he has transitioned very nicely into a pretty farm visage here with level 12 Aghanim Scepter, Gem, mm -hmm. well ahead of the C9 supports in terms of farm. Yeah, Secret just clawed themselves back into the game after the last few picks, have the map control with the Gem on the on the support, Visage. Here, here we go. Really nice offensive ward gets wards, planted by all the Puppy. Being, yeah, that's very good vision. They can actually try to fight. Ah, there's yeah. a gem though. They they dewarded immediately, unfortunately. Mm, they just got a gem on No Tail, or he has it before. I'm not sure. I, I like the ward spot just because it's less common, and normally you see it on the cliff, which is easily dewarded. But yeah, the gem the easily counters it. So, but so far, still hasn't. I still haven't seen like the axe do too much apart from one kill. I'm not sure. He didn't. He didn't feel like the axe, the blink from the axe, accomplished too much yet in the game. Well, right now C9 playing very blind themselves. This Necro three and just general map controller secrets have kind of allowed them to just kind of put C9 in the dark as far as their vision's concerned. Yeah, but it's just starting to show that the C9 supports very good in the landing phase, but not very good at farming in the jungle. Yeah. Well, they've got one water on Roshan. They feel like they can take Roshan once more. Their lineup just kills Roshan too damn quickly. If they see one hero in the top lane or something, easy Aegis. And this time it's not just Aegis, it's Cheese as well. It just, it feels like Secret have no way of preventing this. Not to say that it's a bad, I mean, it obviously is a bad thing, but it's not going to necessarily cause them to lose the game. They can still fight into Aegis Yeah, and as long as they make sure every time C9 is trying to do Rosh, they get something done. Yeah. Be it tower damage or map control, getting wards down, doing ancient stack. Just make sure that they spread their heroes across the map and get as much as possible. And top lane, we see Secret here still staying by the the jungle, maybe looking to see if they can actually get some sort of initiation. Here comes Bone 7, he's gonna run up, try to find someone, but gonna get slowed by the Atos and just couldn't get anything done yeah. again. Nice Atos, Puppy could have been in trouble there. Yeah, this, with the, this the Atos was a really good pickup here. By by Zai, got so much done. The the initiation range from the eight was just so good in this game. Awesome. Provided with them is so much utility. So C9 appear to be at least looking to group up a bit at the top lane, but at, uh, if they ever try to group up too much and push, it's gonna be they're gonna be met by counter push in the other lane. Queen of Pain as well as Lycan, both pretty good counter pushes. The Lycan especially just gonna really threaten these other lanes with the Assault Crest and Necro 3 now completed. Yeah, and S4 has the go for Hex already. So yeah. he's gonna have the silence to most likely be used on the abandon that will be all the bench, but I guess the primary target will be the abandon and get the side of ice on another target. And that's going to also help deal with the Shadow Fiend's newly purchased Butterfly. So you can take out that evasion for a period of time while he's hexed up. And yeah, I think the, you just want to get the Orchid on that battle every fight. You've got to be careful. Bone 7 nearby, ready with a blink call, but he does kind of show himself to the creep wave. Hmm. What has Bone Chan got in mind here? I, I don't think they feel Secret wants to fight right now with the Aegis and, che with the Aegis and Chase. Here we go, jump! Oh, oh no, Zai! Lane with the Omni Zai. Zai cannot afford to die, the Grave is there, but the Culling Blade chops him up! He's going to immediately buy back. The counter push coming up on the lane, back Secret. Off. They need to back off, Lycan is going to base here. Lycan is pushing much faster than Cloud9. Cloud9 have to wait for the next creep wave and... There goes your TPs. First one is the Vengeful Spirit. Artisi's already backed off a bit here, and Fata can actually TP top, feeling wow. confident that the threat at bottom has been negated. They almost, they almost got into a very bad position mm. there. If the Necro 3 was on cooldown for Artisi when they went to the high ground. Oh my god. If he had the Necro, the tower probably... Yeah, I think the tower's gone. Yeah. Well, you can see the threat that this Lycan poses whenever Cloud9 try to group up and go for a push. Secret also, Zai getting a bit caught out there, probably unnecessarily. Yeah, but at least, at the very least, he had buyback, was yep. able to force a C9 back, and they got a very good trade off on the tier 3 at bottom. Looking at the tower damage done, it was so much like 1000 tower damage done at bottom. So I think if you're a Secret, you're going to be looking for the same situation to happen sometime soon and just get the Lycan into the bottom lane once more to be and you'll be able to t take the bottom racks. The other thing is it wasn't just the damage trade, it was the time because Aegis 
lasting for another two minutes. They did have to use the Enigma buyback, but they're trying to stall. They want to take the fight when this Aegis is about to wear off. Unfortunately, C9 have at least one push in them right now. No counter push happening at top or bottom lane. No buyback on your and Enigma. Chase, where you wish you had an Axe Athlon you've, Cop. <laughs> you've got to fight this one. You've yeah. got to fight into the Aegis and Cheese, and you can't go for a counter push in the side lanes. Well, they need to take this fight very well with the Silence. Silence abandoned and hack someone else. That's like the best way to start Who's your fight. ideal target on, on the C9 side? They have Aegis on Feta, but it's... Try to kill Bone7 though, since he's the primary initiator, but you must be able to wait for him to jump in and click the Hex from a far distance yeah. and get the Hex instantly. Oh, here goes oh, the Silence! Oh, Silence comes out! He does get it shielded off, but it prevented the call! I mean, that's that, a good Silence. That could have been big. That even, could have been big. Even with the shield onto the Orchid, just having the initiation prevented. Very nicely done. MB still chipping at the tier 3 tower. They're just trying to delay this Aegis, which is going to be expiring in the next minute or so. Fata on the front lines. Oh, here we go. Oh, the blink call onto S4. S4 still alive for the time being. Grave keeping him healthy. He gets the blink out. Omni Slash now coming through and looking for that black hole. Zai's got a blink dagger still available. The Hex now comes out. On your juggernaut. Bone 7 misses the call. Buyback from Puppy. Bone 7. He's been isolated now. Fata's got this age still. Out. They need to get out. They do need to get out. Black hole on just one. Immediately cancelled by Misery. Zai could not find the black hole he was looking for. The grave is there, but the culling blade from Bone 7. It's going to go off. The Malefus isn't enough. Cloud9 have only lost Envy so far, and Secret have lost two, make it three, and this is with buybacks. This is looking really bad for the Gradient team. Secret have no answers. This Aegis is about to heal up your Shadow Feet as well, and they may just look to continue this push. Oh my god. Aegis yeah. gets reclaimed, and that's fat to back to full gonna HP. Back off right now. I they, I feel they can actually do more damage to the tower. There's no black hole, only visits with a buyback. The career. What's the career doing outside? Ooh, it's gonna. Wow. Back off. It was looking for the gem. <laughs> okay. It wants that gem. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Yeah, they can still do tower damage. Oh, Here blink we go. Uh, that's a blink after he got silenced. Oh, oh Bone 7. What? Whoa. Oh, no. Swap back onto Arteezy though. They're gonna bring down the Lycan in exchange for the Vengeful Spirit. Lycan does have buyback and maybe force to use it. They wanna try and defend this mid lane. Oh, they need to back off right now. Back off right now. Damage has been done. S4 blinks forward. Has the Orchid still available? He's taking big right clicks wow. and S4 could just be dead. The raise from Fata. His oh, Shadow no. Fiend play has been more than impressive this game. He is single-handedly just carrying C9 right now. Well, I, I, sing, single-handedly perhaps a bit of an exaggeration, but he's going to just keep on staying on the higher ground. He, Envy even going to come back into the fight here. S4 going to buy back as well, and C9 have oh, to make no. a decision here. Fata's Do they fight? Do they run? Fata has been left alone in the base. Will pay oh, the price. Man, he got too cocky, though. Ooh. That kill gave, gave so much go and experience to Secret. You know, Secret, end of the day, still of Rex standing. And Man. get a big important kill yeah, that was, on the Shadow Fiend. That was uh, very unnecessary by the Shadow Fiend, though. I'm, well, I guess they are still in a good position after Secret using three buybacks. I think Lycan, Quab, and Dazzle. Yeah, Lycan, Quab, and Dazzle used buybacks in that fight. Yeah, that really hurt the Secret economy. You can see a big drop yeah, but in the I, net worth trade. But I still felt they got something, or they shouldn't have gotten anything out of that. that the Shadow Fiend could have just backed off, and yeah. the death was needless to say something. Something bad for them, but at least they got the buybacks out. And wow. looking at item progression, Enigma still not going to be able to have any progression after the buyback. Quop, after the hex and buyback, nothing much coming up for him. Besarge got a, got a Ghost Scepter. Lycan didn't get anything new as well. All three cores, it feels like, just with buybacks, can't really get those next big items up, which they need ASAP. They probably will get a bit of breathing room. For Cloud9, they'll want to wait for the next Roshan, so Secret at least can maybe have another big item by then, and well, they could also maybe try to take a favorable fight. They're smoked up, looking to find a pickoff here, and... They might want to actually get try to get a MKB on Lycan as soon as possible against the Butterfly. Well, right now, the smoke going to make their way down river here. That hole is going to come off cooldown in, three sec in five seconds. And that last fight, that black hole just didn't cut it. They're going to ping out Envy. Oh, no. Did they see him? There's a Hex Where available the as well as the Orchid. Venge is not there. Not in range for the swap. And Envy going to be burst down. Oh, dear. Big pick off there. Oh, dear. This secret. This is not looking good for them after, after well, such a good fight. I feel like... Cloud9 can still wait out the next Roshan. Look to, uh, so far, they've proven to be a team that... Man, they need to be very careful. They've been giving so many pickoffs away to Secret after getting a commanding lead from the laning phase. 
Okay. Envy does have buyback, but obviously not really looking to use it at this point. If they're just going to lose something like a tier 2 tower mid, probably not something he'll buy back for. Uh, TZ's not even coming to this. He's looking to keep his yeah. farm up and just farm Ancients right now. And I talked about getting the Orchid on the Abaddon from the court, but I don't think it would be possible because no tail can stay so far with the blink and just make sure that he comes in to save his team. So I, I probably see just the main usage of the Orchid is to just silence the axe when he blinks in and tries to get a call off. All right, well, Zai gonna get scouted out. Dire Observer Ward on the high ground here. It's a blink forward. Bone 7, oh, please! Bone 7. Oh, my. Again, he gets caught out. This, this is looking... You know, he hasn't like played... a comeback from for Seeker. He hasn't played that much Axis Tournament. Has not been one of his go-to heroes, and... It's a great pick to have against the Visage Familiars, against the Lycan, the Blink Call against the Quap, but... Secret have caught him out multiple times, have countered his blink initiations with these fast orchids from S4, and suddenly high ground being threatened. There's no buyback on your axe, and with Zai sitting back ready with a black hole, there's gonna be some significant damage to this tier 3 tower, it feels like. Well, Shadow Fiend can still stand in front like yep. a man to defend the tower, so I don't think they can yeah. deal too much Well, this damage. is where Secret, if they can get an Aegis, they Roshan respawning oh, now. Oh no, it's gonna respawn now. Bone oh. 7 is still 40 seconds down the death timer. Can you contest this without your axe? <sighs> it's hard though against the Enigma. They need to make sure that they get the swap on the black hole. Dyer lose that Korea. They scout it out. Misery now possibly isolated as well. That takes the swap out of the picture. If they can kill off Misery, that's huge. Oh, Misery gonna get shielded up. The Sonic Wave coming through. S4 willing to overcommit to this one potentially. Misery's still alive. Meanwhile, the Radiant Jungle. Envy's used his Omni Slash already. He may just get caught out. Puppy gonna grave himself oh up. And without God. a culling blade, Puppy's still alive for the time being. Fast gonna look and bring it down. Vision has brought down your jugs though. Envy is dead. If they want to stop this Roshan happening, they've got to use that buyback. That they will. That comes your Juggernaut. And Secret have got to decide. Do they commit to this Roshan or do they back off? Black Hole still available. And it looks like Secret gonna look to reposition themselves. Uh, they have to. I don't think they can actually contest the rush anymore. It's 4v5. It's probably safer not to just yeah. go because they are not in a good position themselves uh, with the mid lane exposed. If they take a fight right now, they lose a fight. Rex is probably gone. They lost their vision on the high ground too with uh, the blink from the Abaddon onto the oh, cliff. Oh, so. takes the ages. Hmm. I mean, Fata seems somewhat unkillable, but I feel like Envy would be your kind Why? of ideal Aegis I don't carrier. I think they didn't actually want Bone Seven to get it because because look at the Juggernaut. He actually dropped a slot just to make sure he and could pick up something. And Envy. Oh also dear! I think it wasn't intentional that the. Oh, Envy yeah. has no buyback as well. I yeah, feel like there is no reason you would why not would want to give not it to your Jug. Give it to the Jug. I think it was just. Uh, oh my God! Bone Seven, please. Well, nice fall, doing what he can to keep the pressure up on this top lane. You mentioned an Ag Scepter earlier. If he wants to buy something like that, he is up to 3.5k gold. He, but could, he could still go for the Axe. I think the Axe in, in this point of the game could be something that he wants to have in base defense. You can buy time with the Axe, Ultimate, and the Lycan. He could just be somewhere else, speed pushing and forcing C9 to move and stop the push. So, could be an item that he looks to go for next. Or his other option would probably be Shiva's cut. Yep. Oh, march down the middle lane. C9 looking for a pickup. Artesis could be careful. He has got money for buyback. Uh, 5.2k gold. He's staying out of range. This has to work for C9. They already use so much of their resources in No the buyback for 40 seconds on your Lycan, actually. And this mid rack's exposed. They need a delay. They want to have that buyback first. Boots of Travel's bought. He may just go for the trade here. He's teeping in the bottom lane. They're going for a base trade. Zai gonna survive the Omni Slash. Now it switches over to Kuro, who goes Scepter's up. Secret are pushing top. They're also pushing bottom. What's the move here? Does C9 oh, go for throw? No. They've got to back off. They're not even going for the racks right now. Where are the TPs? Vata does not have a TP. Envy oh, no. also, I don't think, has a TP. No one has TPs. The this throw. is Familiar's getting the sun. They're the going throws. for the throne. Oh, no. It's a catastrophe. The Cloud9. Here comes S4 as well. They're just running back. They're running for dear life. They've got to protect the base. Artizi now pops the ultimate. There's no clip available. He dies in the fountain, but he's got ages. He can't even buy back and TP home. They're just going to get the throne enough of this holy shit cloud nine have lost game two i can't believe it what just happened the biggest late game faux pas cloud nine have shown this tournament and that's with some terrible late game performances in previous matches